Letters from Rifka, Chapter Twenty, or sorry, Chapter Two, September Third, Nineteen Nineteen. And with a sword he clove my breast, plucked out the heart he made beat higher, and in my stricken bosom pressed and set a coal of living fire. Pushkin. Stem, September Third, Nineteen Nineteen, Poland. Dear Tova, we were fortunate that we ran into no further trouble until we reached the Polish border. At the port, at the border, though, guards came aboard. Get off the train, a squat man ordered. His round face and red cheeks did not match the sharpness of his voice. Get all of your things off the, out of the train. Take off your clothes. A doctor must examine you before you enter Poland. Can you imagine taking off your clothes just like that in the middle of a train here? Tova, doctors examine you often because of your crooked back. Is this the way they treat you? I fought them. I would not take off my clothes for them. Do as I say, the guard barked at me, or you, you will be sent back, all of you. From the fierceness of his voice, I knew he would not hesitate to turn us over to the Russian police. I could not have my family return to Berdichev because of me. I took off my clothes. I huddled beside Mama as we stood in our underwear in the waning light outside of the boxcar. Aunt Rachel had made this underwear for me. It was white cotton and very pretty. She had made me two sets, but one was stolen from me as I swam in the titter of this past summer. I thought of the things the Russians had taken from my family as I stood in the train yard, and I was angry. Why, Tova? Why is it that if a Russian peasant does not get what he wants, he feels justified in stealing it from a Jew? Papa and the boys undressed on the opposite side of the car. At least they allowed us that much privacy. Mama and I, we had folded our clothes on top of our bags in the dry grass along the track. The guards picked up our clothes and our belongings and took them away, even my rucksack with Mama's candlesticks. Before I could yell to them to bring our things back, the doctor came. He growled at us. I could not understand his words, but he made it clear what he wanted. He ordered us to remove our underwear. This doctor, he stank of vomit and schnapps. His breath choked my throat, and I thought I would be sick. Mama did not seem to notice his stench. She smiled and nodded to him. Perhaps she feared he would send us back to Russia. Why else would she act so? Mama helped me to remove my underwear, shielding my body with her own. Her gold locket hung between her breasts. Keep quiet for once, Rivka. She whispered in my ear, stay behind me. I covered my nakedness with my hands as best I could, but Mama, she acted as if stripping before the Polish doctor was no trouble, like we did this every day. She pretended this, I think, to protect to protect me. The doctor examined us. He took longer with Mama. I could hardly believe this brave woman was the same who wept with fear in your cellar last night. The doctor spent so much time with Mama, he hardly noticed me. When he did turn his attention to me, the way he looked gave me goose flesh. Tova, you are so practical. You will say I have goose flesh because we stood naked outside in the cold, but it was not the cold that caused me to shiver. The doctor made me feel dirty. He looked in my eyes and my mouth and my hair. Are you sick? He asked me in Russian. I kept my eyes down. I could not stand to look at him. I stared instead at my toes, curled right in the stones at the edge of the tracks. I prayed the doctor would just go away. He yelled at me. Something in Polish. Mama spoke with him. Then she took my hand and led me into a small building. In the building, a woman sprayed us with something vile. It burned my skin and my scalp, my nose and my eyes. Finally, the Polish guards allowed us back onto the train. They returned our clothes to us and our bags, stinking of fumigation. My eyes watered from the stench of it. That was not the worst, though. When I lifted my rucksack, it was not as heavy as it had been before. I searched the entire bag, emptying it out on the floor of the train, but Mama's candlesticks were gone. So they stole our candlesticks, Mama said. It could be worse, Rivka, much worse. Stop sniffling and finish getting dressed. We pulled our clothes back on before Papa, Nathan, and Saul joined us. Mama sighed with relief as they climbed into the car. I turned away from their nakedness. How could the Poles do this to my papa? To my brothers, how could the Poles do this to me? The train started moving before papa and the boys finished dressing. That is how we entered Poland. I've never been in another country before, not even in another village. 
You know how the Russians kept us, Tova? Like prisoners, never permitting us to travel? Russia has not been so bad for you. With money, Russia can be very good, even for a Jew. For us, it was a prison. Poland does not look that different from Berdichev. The same crooked cottages, the same patchy roads, the same bony fences leaning into the dust. Looking out from the train, we see people dressed like us in browns and blacks, people wrapped in layers of clothes. The women bundle their heads in kerchiefs, the men shuffle along in ankle boots and boots. Will it be like this in America, too? I will stop writing for now. My head throbs and my body aches from all that has happened. Shalom, my cousin Rifka.